Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Adoption Engagement Forum on 28th of October 2022. Um, I think if um, there's a couple of new people, so it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us. So I think maybe if we just do a quick quick round of in introductions, that'd be, that'd be really helpful. Um, so in no particular order, if could start with you, Gavin. Yeah, no problem, Tim. Um, morning, everyone. Um, and my name's Gavin Meller. I work for a company called Substance. Um, and we've been working alongside another company called um, Open Data Services Co-op ODSC um, to do some support work around Open Active for the last 18 months, couple of years. Um, so I've just I'm just bobbing onto the meeting this morning um, just to give a bit of context around some of the the broader work um, that is influencing conversations about, for instance, what the Adoption and Engagement Forum ought to be doing. Um, um, particularly in relation to the other forums and and processes that um, that operate around open active. Um, so I'm in a little bit of listening mode, but I'll I'll lead a bit of a discussion later on 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 some of the objectives for for this group. Fantastic. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Charlie. Uh, yeah, Charlie Clark. I'm the commercial director at Playfinder um, and steering committee members for for open active. Great. Thanks, Charlie. And um, Chris. Come to me next. Hi all, uh, Chris Bancroft. I'm the data management and requirement specialist here at the ODI, working on the Open Active initiative. Thanks, Chris. Um, Geraldine, if I come to you next. Hi everybody. So um, yes, I'm Geraldine. I work for the Yorkshire Sport Foundation as a data and insight manager. So some of you um, may have known Emma Gooch, who's gone off on maternity leave. So I'm covering um, her role while um, she's off. So um, yeah, so um, as we said, this is my first session, so probably be doing more listening than maybe um, lots of talking in this one. But yeah, really interested to see um, what topics we'll be discussing. That's great. Thanks, Geraldine. Thanks for joining us. It's great to have you here. Um, Kanika? Hello, everyone. I'm Kanika. I have recently joined the ODI as an impact manager. I am on the Open Active project, uh, figuring out all the monitoring, evaluation and learning frameworks for the project itself. And yes, pretty excited to be on the uh, phase five initiative. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Nick, come to you next, please. Hello, uh, Nick from I'm in. <laughs> Great, thank you, short and sweet. <laughs> um, Nish. Hello, Nish from I'm in. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. And uh, last, but by no means least, Tom. Well, let me get myself off mute. Apologies, I'm not on video today. I'm uh, a little bit under the weather, so you don't want to see me coughing and spluttering around. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm Tom from Played, and yeah, we are involved in Open Active um, by building activity finders and a, book, a booking platform that's also Open Active compliant. That's great, thanks, Tom. I think. Um, you were last by means of the alphabet, which is uh, I simplified with because I, I always happens to me being a Tim as well. Um, fantastic. Thanks very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we've got an update on the chat, Tim. Oh, OK, thank you very much. Yeah, Harsh says he's there. Uh, oh, OK, yeah. that's great. Well, great to have you here, Harsh. Thanks for joining us. Um, and it looks like from your from your um, your name that you're from at McKee. So yeah, great, great to join you. Um, I'll introduce yourself on, on your behalf, but please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, great, well, we'll make a start then. Just a quick um, run through of the agenda um, for today. We've done the introductions and we're gonna have a quick look at some proposed objectives for the adoption engagement form, which Gavin has kindly um, agreed to help facilitate that, that discussion. Um, we were hoping to have David from the ODI here to um, quickly chat through the ODI comms plan but he um, doesn't seem to have joined us yet so I don't know if Chris or um, Kanika you, you might be able to send him a quick message just to see if he is planning on joining um, but we'll we'll cross that bridge if we get to it if, if he's not able to join today and then I just wanted to give a quick update around some work that's been going on in the active partnership network as well um, particularly in relation to um, activity finders so and and then there'll be a chance for for people to raise any other business towards the end so to start with um we've got some proposed um objectives for the adoption engagement forum but just before i pass over to gavin i just to give a bit of context can, can everyone see that okay is that coming up on the slide 
Um, so this isn't for you know uh, to to decide on today. Um, so the plan is just to this be a starting point for discussion and um, to frame this in the in the wider context of work going on in other groups in Open Active, which Gavin hopefully will be able to to help us run through. Um, then the plan is to to share. Um, uh, wider terms of reference, which will include um, these objectives for comment among the community. So there'll be a, a period of time, probably the next couple of weeks, um, for people to comment openly on, um, and then we can revisit perhaps at the, at the next adoption engagement forum meeting in a couple of weeks, um, and uh, yeah, progress with with hopefully agreeing and deciding on some of these objectives. And this sort of came about through some of the conversations we've had in. In the past couple of meetings where it was clear that um, the forum needed a bit more direction and a bit more of a clearly defined purpose and um, to help us to really make use of this time and make make use of everybody's time time better um, so i think hopefully that just gives a, a quick context and um, i don't know if there's anything you want to add gavin if i can pass over to you to help to help lead this no problem tim i mean so, some of you guys will be, be much more aware of of all the different processes that are going on across open active at the moment than than others but for for everyone's benefit um as we've got into the early stages of the the new phase of work um there's a con there's continued discussions going on about how to how to organize the governance of the initiative to ensure that it's um it's all working as well as possible and everyone's very very clear on on which organizations hold what responsibilities and roles and which forums um different groups around the around the initiative do what um and a lot of those conversations have been focused on the steering committee that um that operates around the initiative discussions around what that steering committee needs to do who needs to be on it etc um but I think over the last month or so, there's a couple of things that have that have happened that I've been involved in some of it, but not not in all of it. So you guys will will have different perspectives on this. Um, there's a um, I understand there was conversations at the last um, AEF uh, meeting, which were focused on look, what precisely are we doing here, and um, who should be attending this forum, and how do we make sure that this forum is doing things that are making a material difference to the initiative and supporting the initiative in its in its broader goals what's also i think happened in the last sort of month or so and particularly in the last steering committee meeting is that there was a discussion that was had about um as we're starting to chop away at precisely what the steering committee ought to be doing there's stuff that's maybe historically sat sort of around the steering committee that we now think actually um, can be part of a more a, a more focused, beefed up, if you like, version of the, the AEF forum. Um, and what we're interested in doing is, is designing alongside the people who would engage with this forum, um, a, a new set of objectives that are understood and shared across um, the community, however that's defined, and then that there's some real clarity brought to the question of who should attend this forum and why would they attend this forum and what are the benefits for individuals and what are the benefits for the initiative. Um, so there's a reasonable amount of sort of stuff to, to cover, but as ever, we thought it was most appropriate to start with proposing some objectives for the group that could then be worked with to define all the rest of it. In other words, who should be engaging? What, um, who, why would they engage? And what happens to the information um, that is shared in this forum? Um, what is it doing to influence the broader initiative, its ways of working, what it concentrates on, et cetera, et cetera. So you guys are gonna be much more familiar with the, the sort of history of this forum and the way that it's, it's, um, it's worked in the past than I am. But I thought, just as a relative outsider, it might be useful for me to come in today and just share these um, these objectives that Tim and colleagues at ODI have, have pulled together over the last couple of weeks. 
and then kick off a process really of review of those, further input into those, and then working over the next couple of weeks through some terms of reference that would be built off the back of these, these objectives in order that we're confident that we understand how the group is supposed to support the things that, that we're saying it ought to be doing in, in support of, of Open Active broadly. Does all that sort of broad context make sense before we start looking at the, the objectives themselves? Yeah, good stuff. I think you're getting lots of so, notes, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. So I think I'm right in saying, Tim, just from a process perspective, what we what we're concentrating on today is presenting these um, these objectives to the to to everybody for for some initial comment, but that they will be shared separately with the group after today um, yes, for yeah. further input. Yeah, yeah, uh, and just yeah. early next week well, they'll be shared, and then yeah, probably given maybe a couple of weeks until the next of these meetings, then we can. Can we revisit them then if everyone thinks that that's a, a reasonable reasonable time length and a, a reasonable process to to go by and just for clarity tim sorry i should have i should have asked you this yesterday um the terms of reference that we've sort of been been kicking back and forth have they been shared with the group yet or are you going to share those alongside not, not yet the, the plan is to share those alongside um well but you know with these objectives in in incorporated yeah. in them, um yeah all, all together next week that makes that makes good sense um the just to mention the terms of reference guys that the they're a bit more than terms of reference in some ways i think or we're trying to pull them into the direction of being a bit more than just just sort of you know the sort of classic technical type of stuff that you get in terms of reference i think what we're looking for is is that document to sort of help bring together and define all the questions that I've just spoken to. So in terms of you know what, what happens with the information, well, who should be involved in the group, what gets discussed within the group, and then what happens with that information. Um, and we're also trying to define, I think, some of the, not just from the community, but from those organizations that operate around Open Active, what types of individuals ought to be involved in this group say for instance from odi from sport england from the other sort of significant um national stakeholders in order that we we can all be confident that the important stuff that's being discussed here is being fed back efficiently to the right people and is influencing the right decisions um across across the initiative so you'll see some emergent detail in the terms of reference around those kinds of issues as you as you receive them next week. But as Tim says, this is this is very much a sort of opening presentation of these types of issues. Bit of chat around them, but please, you know, take take the opportunity over the next couple of weeks to feed into Tim um, and make sure that by the next meeting we can start to draw some of this stuff together. Um, we'll all be confident then on what this group is and and why we're engaging, and then you know folks can folks can really concentrate on trying to meet these objectives rather than sort of worrying too much about what this what this group is because hopefully that'll be that'll be put to bed. Um, so yeah, onto the objectives themselves, and at the moment they're really you know they're quite high level, and um, they're there to be um, built upon to be broken down. Um, and you know, yeah, they're not they're not by any stretch a set, um, a set of of objectives that we expect to be in this shape in a couple of weeks' time. They're there to be to be worked with. So just to give you a sense of the spirit of the things that we're we're talking about, and maybe give a bit of context about what's what's underpinning those. Crucially, I think there's a there's a sense that the group needs to be inclusive and representative. Of organizations across the sector so this is the this is nodding towards the first objective i think there's a sense that you know we we all need to think about how we make this group as um as appealing as possible to those who are interested in in anything relating to open data in the sector um an engaging forum and you know, one of the ways to do that is to give people real sense of purpose of why they would that why would they engage so there's a there's a sense underpinning that objective, both of what we want the group to be perceived as as a welcoming, inclusive, representative space. But obviously, we've got to understand how we can make that 
um, appear more than just a nice set of words. Um, and crucial to that, I think, is, is making sure that folks understand why they would engage and what, um, what multiple benefits there might be in relation to that. Um, going down to the sort of the, the, the question of, well, who potentially does need to engage? What are the, the types of organizations or types of people that would engage? And the second objective, we've got potential publishers and users. And there's a behavior nodded towards there or an intent that's nodded towards there about advocating for the adoption of open active. So this, this, this is a, a group that is brought together to discuss, but is also there to advocate. And there'll be multiple types of, of processes that need to be built in order to support what that means and what individually we do to advocate and what we do collectively to advocate. Um, I think one thing that's hopefully sort of always been implicit in this group, but I think is worth is worth um, referencing in the objectives is that we our sense is this group ought to be maybe separately from all the rest of the groups, um, sort of uniquely and and um, not singularly, but but very to a considerable degree focused on growth. That this is about um, bringing new organizations, increasing the number of organizations involved in the open active community. So that for me suggests that we ought to be constantly looking for new people to engage, new organizations to engage, because this is, um, you know, this is meant to be the flywheel, if you like, that is going to generate that energy and that growth around the initiative. And this ought to be a really crucial forum in, in doing that. Um, Something that speaks in the fourth objective, something that speaks to um, some of the work that's going on across the, the ODI at the moment and some of the work that's going on in, the, in, this, four, in this phase of, of development. Um, one of the things that we're really keen to do on, on Open Active is to start working around nominated use cases much more clearly, um, where we can bring organizations together around particular themes or emergent areas where we think there are opportunities. And I think we see this forum as being crucial both to the identification of those use cases, um, but also sort of discussions about what might need to be done in order to engage with them in a sort of truly purposeful way. Um, and there's been, you know, there's some, some early work going on around that that's gonna be, be de developed further next year. In the fifth objective then, um, we've got, a sort of spin off from that, I guess, which is to really try and focus on um, the funding that might be associated or might be able to be associated with particular use cases and opportunities um, so that we can start to think about how we collaborate um, within the context of the formal initiative, if you like, but how organizations themselves, um, without necessarily the involvement of, of ODI and other. And other sort of central central actors um, in the initiative, how they can come together, identify potential sets of funding, work together to bring those to the initiative, and then engage with the initiative in order that it can support the development of that, of that use case. And then crucially, I guess, just to, to wrap up this little bit, um, we see that one of the core objectives of the initiative is that it should be collaborating with and supporting We've mentioned here the steering committee, the W3C group, all the other forums and, and, and groups that operate around. There should be very clear relationships between this forum and those other groups, such that we know that the issues that are being discussed here are having influence and are being brought to bear um, on, on the sort of broader work of the initiative and its understanding of what it ought to be prioritizing. Um, so yeah, look, I'm not going to say much more. That those are the six objectives that that we've got as a sort of starting set. Hopefully, you understand sort of the context of where they're coming from. Um, but yeah, is, is there any are there any initial discussions or any initial comments or queries that folks would like to share that um, that can be you know that we can already be thinking about in advance of Tim circulating this information next week. Any comments or queries, Charlie? Um, in in uh, to to fill a silence. Um, <laughs> so, in a really positive 
positive sense, I really welcome the idea of defining this group's role. Um, and Gavin, I think that was really well laid out. Um, I, I think Tim Tim used the right word, and and I think you added a word to it of focus and growth feel very relevant. Um, and I agree that what's on the screen now, and and you've you've said it, so it's not um, it's not not uh, not spoken is extremely broad. And I think if we leave it as such, we risk not making much headway um, because it'll make it really unclear for new people what we are focusing on um, because it is so broad. And it'll make it really unclear for the existing community what our role still is um, because it's just too open. Um, so it sounds like we've got a two week process to go through, but, but broadly, I agree. I think it's a huge risk how broad these are. Um, you know, I, I think in the six or so years of Open Active, everyone involved has been taking an example like involved in trying to increase the number of organizations involved that's one of the broadest statements i think we could ever list in a bullet point list so i think we need to be really careful with things like that um because it really doesn't define the role it's, it's every single person in the community not this group who should be doing that um from champions to sc to 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 suppliers and stakeholders so yeah i think we need to be really careful no i think that's i think that's totally fair charlie and i think there's um I think the the challenge, or, or the, the the way I've been trying to think about this, as I've, I've done a you know chatted with Tim a little bit about it, and we've had we've had various meetings um, that have involved some reflection on this stuff, is that for my sanity on this, I need to understand if you like, okay, if I'm an actor who turns up, it's almost like user stories to some degree. If I'm somebody who turns up to this group, and this happens, then what is it that I'm expected to do with that? What is my role within that? Do I just share some information back? If so, what does that information do? Where does it go? And I think we need to define a set of processes off the back of these objectives that make it quite clear the kinds of things we're talking about so that it doesn't look like, oh, well, this group's got an enormous responsibility, but nobody can explain how it meets those responsibilities or what their individual roles are within meeting those responsibilities. So I think it's there's, there's some work to do to pin down precise processes that folks can understand are the kinds of things that would typically happen in this group. Um, and some of that, I mean, this is, you know, the, those that were at the last steering committee meeting will know, we talked about say, for instance, the importance of having somebody like David here today. So David, David's joined us from ODI. David is on the comm side. David ought to be understanding the information from this group in order to think about how that might influence comms. So we can see a sort of direct connection between what's being discussed here, the opportunities that are being identified, or the problems that are being identified, and then what comms might do about that. We talked about having Sport England a bit more visible and directly involved in this group, such that Sport England can input on potential opportunities, but also hear from the group what those opportunities are. And Sport England can do very practical things with that um, that maybe other organisations aren't able to do because of Sport England's sort of unique role within the sector. So I think it's it's building all that up as well, such that we know that this isn't. Um, this isn't a talking shop and it isn't so broad that nobody understands how on earth we actually achieve the objectives. So that will inevitably follow from some of these objectives, but we're starting there and you guys will get the, the sort of terms of reference that start to build on those um, over the uh, uh, over next week as, as Tim shares that information. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Gavin, I think one other thing I would perhaps add is sensing there is, um, a growing clarity amongst the um, the group who has helped sort of bring this to the table in the last two weeks. Um, I think there's a bit of a risk here that, um, again, risk in a positive way, that there'll be a clash of, not a clash, <laughs> use complete, uh, that sort of language, but um, new, new ideas being brought to the table without absolute clarity um, and a lot of legacy um, in terms of the players who are already here. Um, what I would probably welcome as well is more clarity coming from the group who are defining this, um, uh, rather than us inputting first state, this is what we think and we want. These are the topics we think that, that should be being focused on, um, rather than us 
providing that because I think that will risk old things coming to the table um, uh, initially. And I see that perhaps this group needs to be rebuilt um, and some of the legacy players, I hope this isn't politically sensitive with other friends and colleagues on the call, be rebuilt without some of the legacy players at the table to give it its best chance to refresh and us be invited when we can add particular individual or group value, because I think the risk is we won't be clear on the specific value we can add because there's a lot of broad knowledge of the initiative. Um, uh, that might not, I hope that makes some sense, but I, I think the clarity needs to come from the group shaping this first, and I'm not sure that's us um, in terms of everyone on, this, on the call right now, um, and then we can contribute to that, uh, otherwise we might just resh reshape what we had before. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that, that, does make, that does make sense, and it's, we're wrestling with sort of similar problems um, at, at, across some of various groups really is, it's it's a it's a question of how what the starting point is and who does who does the leading and we've taken a we've taken a um, the opportunity to put down some as you say very albeit very broad objectives some starting objectives and then some supplementary information which is in the the terms of reference. I think if once you've seen that information, you sense that there is. There's more context that needs to be provided in order, you know, from the from the group, from the you know, essentially the organising players, in order to help shape or help inform everyone's sense of why we're proposing the objectives we're proposing. Then please, please say it's a it's it's a question of how best to collaborate on this. I think, um, and obviously there are fairly unique vantage points at say for instance ODI because people like Tim are across the broadest sense of what everything that's going on and the real organization that's going on um, across the initiative at the moment um, and that's very important in order to shape this conversation but equally what we don't want to do is over prescribe to people what we think we in inverted commas think this group ought to be um, before giving them an opportunity to 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 shape that themselves. So there'll be a bit of a, a to and fro with, I think, and it won't just be a matter of we've collaborated, this is what everyone agreed, and there's no sort of broader input or more directed input from, from um, the central players, but they, yeah, I think you're right to raise the concern. So something for, for Tim and I maybe to take offline and have a bit of a think about. Yeah. Just just to add in, sorry, quickly, Gavin, I think, good to see you again, by the way. Um, just trying to add on to these i think they're broadly um going in the right direction i just think um if we could uh connect some measure like some measurable um elements and metrics that each of these objectives might have um just so that i think that just enables us to see whether we're, we're making progress rather than it just being a kind of increase this or decrease that it's just how by how much by when all these type of elements to just make them a bit more measurable would be welcomed. That makes good sense, Tom. I think there's there's some work going on um, to publish some KPIs that um, are that relate to the work that ODI are doing um, on the initiative at the moment. Make those public. Make the um, the monitoring of those public. But I think there's there's maybe something to think about here, Tim to think about, yeah, how do we make material these objectives such that folks can use, can, can understand whether progress is being made or not, I guess. And that might be useful both from, a, from that perspective, but just from a sense of defining those processes and behaviours and things that are going to come out of this group. Um, because, yeah, once we make these objectives quite material, it's maybe a little easier to say, well, these are the these are the precise things that need to happen in order to make sure that we're meeting those objectives as a group. Um, so yeah, maybe one to one to consider. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Kevin. I think um Kanika can probably help with with that as well. Yeah. Um brilliant. I just conscious of time, there's a couple of other things we want to cover, but I think Nick looked like he was poised to to want to input. So um I'll I'll let you uh, I'll let you make your point, but yeah, if you don't mind just being being uh, fairly, fairly yeah, no. <laughs> we, 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 I, it's one of those things. Uh, as soon as uh, exactly, I think I, I totally see what Charlie's saying there in terms of the same voices. 
Um, I was waiting in silence to see who would speak up. Inevitably, it would be Charlie or me or Tom, right? <laughs> but then, to be fair, if you look at the people on the call, that that the people who have been around the longest, and as, as Charlie's kind of saying, I've got a lot of kind of thoughts on on things, as along with Nish, I'm sure. Um, so I wonder though if um, there's there's I made this comment in Slack, so I'll make it quickly again here um, because um, it might not be noticed by everybody. Um, so this is a form of people talking which it always will be if this is just the meeting but my question really is i think i think we should move away from that actually i think this should be a group of people that commit to act and uh, and share what they're doing and that because that because this isn't we're not we're not steering you know a, a group of, of of 10 sales people below us right which are all operating 100% uh, on on outreach and all the rest of it, like the the way the sales structure works is Charlie's got some people in his organisation are doing outreach. Obviously, Tim's doing a bit of that. Nish has got some of those different people, right? So this whole this is distributed, and therefore we need to be really thinking about this as a this is this this is what I mean about what is what is this? What are these objectives? Are these objectives what the forum is doing, or are these objectives what the members of the forum are committing to do and get involved in? Because I think that's really quite a different thing. And also, I think it really speaks to how we come at this whole thing. I don't, you know, I, I can't, I, I think it's kind of slightly orthogonal to what, what Charlie was saying. In fact, it's, I, I almost feel like use cases is an emergent property of the group. I think it comes out of what people are doing and focusing on. And, and I think the best way, if we can create a forum here where people are sharing what they're doing, Really practically, you know, we're engaging with Parasport at the moment, uh, alongside Parasport with a bunch of organisations. I know Harsha Apneki, uh is uh, is working with various organisations. Um, you know, there's there's people who are doing that kind of outreach, and we're all doing it for our own reasons and our own locations with our own, you know, etc. Um, and so I think if then this forum is, as I've said in previous um, meetings in this group. A place where people can set and you know put things on an agenda that are useful to help them move forward with their work stream. Let's call it. Everyone's got their own open active work stream in their organisation that we're all doing something. Um, then, if new people come to the group, the question is, what's your open active work stream going to look like? And maybe your open active work stream is just turning up at this call and doing nothing else. In which case, let's make that really clear. And and what that means is that we've got a really clear sense of. What resources actually are we doing? You know, what because we can turn up at this call and all say, yeah, let's go after this, let's set this KPI, let's do this objective. And then we all leave the call and no one has any resources to do anything about it. And, and I think that's been the pattern we've got stuck in. And I actually don't think it's anything to do with, you know, who's how long we've been here or who's setting the agenda or whatever. I just think we've we we've we've not really connected practically who's doing the stuff with the great ideas that we have in, in, in this space. So I think if we are able to focus ourselves on um, making this about what people are committing to do and work streams, then I think that would be, that'd be really helpful. No, I, I, th I think, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't disagree with any of that, Nick. And I think you've, you've probably articulated the separation between these objectives for the group and then what individuals do better than I have, <laughs> because I think that you're right. That's the difference. It's what is the group committed to? And then what, what are the typical behaviours, ways of working, actions that folks who attend the group need to commit to, maybe a bit strong, but need to sort of understand that those are the things we're expecting active you know, members of this group to do. We need to make sure that they're broad enough such that somebody who's right in the foothills of engaging with Open Active can do that for the first time, um, even if you know they're their only involvement in it, as you say, is turning up to a meeting to understand how they get involved. But if there's other actors who are much more engaged further down the line, then we need to understand, yeah, what it is that we hope that they will do in the benefit of the initiative. Um, because that's that's ultimately, I think, you know, the, the question we all know implicitly that there's individual organizational benefit, um, hopefully for turning up to this but it's about how we make the sharing of information and the sharing of opportunities and leads, et cetera, et cetera, um, at this group as sort of a virtuous a process as possible for, for everybody. Um, 
so yeah, I think that's 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 going to be an important reflection point as you as you wrestle with this stuff as it comes out next week. Um, is how to make sure we've got real clarity on that, um, not to overdetermine people's behaviours, but to make sure that everyone's clear on, you know, the fact that it isn't just a talking shop. That we hope that people will come and do things together and we really genuinely collaborate in this space. Great, thanks, Kevin, and um, thanks everyone for all your input. I think even just as an initial discussion, that was that was really useful. Um, and we can revisit this in a in a couple of weeks' time once everyone's had a had a chance to look through and digest and, and gather gather thoughts. Um, so great. If um, everyone's happy, we'll, we'll move on now. And um, next up, I'd like to introduce um, David, um, who is head of commons Hi. at the ODI. Um, and David's just going to quick give a quick introduction to, in a similar sort of vein, really, um, to a comms plan that he he and the comms team here at the ODI have been putting together. Um, which will, with the view then to, to share that for, for comment uh, and input from, from the group. So, David, if you don't mind just giving a oh. kind of quick introduction of yourself and, and then go from there. Thanks, Tim. Hi, I'm David. As Tim said, I've been at the ODI for ooh, just almost a year. We've got our summit in a couple of weeks and I joined just after the last one. So I'm, I'm yet to actually go through one, which is a scary prospect. Um, so I've been... Um, I've been working on the comms plan. I mean, the, the first thing to say on the comms plan is I'm not going to walk you through every single bit of the comms plan right now, uh, because there's quite a lot to digest. Um, and those who are at the steering committee meeting, I took the same approach with that really, just to outline what I'll do in this is outline where we are with it, um, what's in it, and then um, I will talk about sharing, sharing it and the next steps. So, I mean, most of you have probably, well, that's me presuming you might have come across communications plans before you might not have done um they're quite simple in many ways um what what i try to do with this one is kind of outline the objectives of the of the comms plan define the audiences and this is based on the on the bid documents that i've seen all that kind of stuff the most important thing for me in the in this comms plan which is where where i will need some input from people on this call is the messaging around it and then also there's an extensive q a in there as well um the reason I haven't circulated this before is because I'm I've still I'm still going through some feedback and thinking about some questions that were raised when I when I sent this around to the steering committee, um, and I know that I've had a conversation with um, Tim and Julie this week at our end about answering some of those questions that are going in there because I think they are um, quite broad, almost scoping boundaries sorts of questions, but they will be really useful in the Q and A section of this document of, of this document because it will kind of outline roles and responsibilities as well for when we if for when we do have any inbound inquiries and things like that. The other thing that is in this plan is um, a list of timings of content and tactics and things like that. So, I mean, as I mentioned, we've got our our summit coming up. Um, a week on Tuesday, so there are there are there's elements of of work going on in that. We've had conversations about um, regular communications that are going to go out, whether that's in the form of a newsletter or something else. And we've just start we've just picked up some work again on um, the Open Active website. So we'll be we had an introductory meeting this week about looking at user journeys for that. We found you know, there's a lot of work that was done, I believe, around February. 2021 that we want to have a look at again to look at the user journeys and obviously the communications plan and the messaging that's in it we will then use to update the website so in terms of timings on this <clears throat> i think it's going to be hard for me to get anything out and around to people um, before our summit it's become a bit all-encompassing but what i would like to do is get this communications plan sort of done and dusted by the end of the year um, so I've had some input so far. I think it should come around to people on this call for some input as well. That I will then use to piece together um, like a final draft and then send that round. But I, I really like to get this done and dusted by the end of the year so that as we come into 2023, we can start locking in the, the activities um, in place um, and just kind of go out there with all guns blazing because, you know, uh, time is marching on this. And I think there's, a, there's um, I'm, I'd like to take a similar approach to the website as well. So where the website can be, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything hugely wrong with the website as it is. I think it could be a bit clearer and I think the user journeys on it could could do with a looking a, again at. I think it's um, 
yeah, I think some of those user journeys are probably possibly not as simple as they could be. So that's that's the kind of thing that we we want to do. I think some of that work can be ongoing as we're doing it as well. We don't need we don't need to be, that to be perfect in 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 um, joining up with the communications plan. But I think there does need to be a little bit of work on that. Um, so you know, I, I want to take a really sort of open approach to doing the communications plan. I want everyone to have input and feedback um, because there's a lot of um, it's not lot, a lot more knowledge out there on, on this than, than I've got. So I think uh, we're going to need that from our point of view. But like I said, I want to, I'd really like to get this done um, by the end of the year. So sometime after next Tuesday, sorry, a week on Tuesday, possibly before I could, if I can manage it, but I will be sending this around um, for you to have a look at. Like I said, there's not, there's nothing major or surprising in it. I want to keep these, these communications plans as simple as possible, but I think there are some really like core bits of activity we can focus on some core events. And I think I would also like to have a mechanism in place where we're trying to surface case studies and things like that, because I think that that's going to be the most useful thing to try and get more, um, uh, more perspective on this and more people involved. I think there are also some conversations that I um, need to follow up on from when I presented at the steering committee around some of the branding and issues around that um, that are historical. So I'm going to take those into consideration to get as well while, when I'm developing this plan. And I think that will be iterative as well. Um, so yeah, I've sort of like talked around it without actually sharing any of it with you. Uh, because like I said, I think it's going to be easier for people to go away and digest it and then feedback from there. But does anyone have any broad questions about that approach? I'm happy to take those. I'm also really conscious of time and the agenda as well, so I don't want to take up too much of it. No, that looks good, I think, David. Cool. Okay, well, you you should all um I'll use I'll use the um the invite list for this for, for this meeting uh to to send this round and I'll I'll I've got a little bit of work to do on it, um, but I'll post that round in with in the next couple of weeks or so with some deadlines about when I'd like some feedback by. But if you can keep an eye out for that, that would be great. Fantastic. Thanks, David. And um, there is an open active Slack um, as well, which which I can um, invite you to, which it might be worth just sharing it through through there as well, post, posting a message on that just right. just to um, get get it, you know, make sure make sure everyone everyone can see it. Yeah. Um, Thank fantastic. You. Thanks very much, David. Uh, so just quickly moving on. Um, I think a lot of this will possibly be um, items that are warrant um covering at a future agenda item to give a bit more bit more time to but the, the main focus of, of today was um the looking at the objectives but i just wanted to quickly update on a session um that was run by or arranged by the national active partnership network that we were invited to um a week or so ago um in relation to activity finders um, and I think the active part, as some of you on the call might might be aware, because I think uh, as follow up to that session, um, the active partnership Na national network has arranged some follow up drop in sessions with individual system providers for active partnerships to to sign up to. Um, so you might be aware of that. Um, I won't go into into too much detail about the session itself. It was mainly just. Um, looking at uh, a couple of active partnerships who presented on activity finders they have and their, some of their experiences. Um, but I thought there were two kind of key pieces of learning, which I thought were worth sharing it um, just for people to, to have, have a think about. Um, one of which was that the, the framing of the discussion and the meeting around it being about activity finders rather than specifically around open active or open data seemed to attract a, a different audience and seemed to attract different interest um, it was attended by approximately 30 attendees and it included a few CEOs of active partnerships as well so I thought that was quite interesting and, and might lead into some conversations about potential messaging and potential framing of, of how people are introduced to open active and whether whether um, whether you know this group can look at that or part of the part of the comms um, David perhaps we can look at with you as well and the, the second point I wanted to raise was that there seemed to be a few incorrect assumptions or incorrect um, thinking around what open active was and what open data was um, and uh, some misinformation around as well, not, not necessarily deliberately and not don't mean in that way, but in that, you know, people don't necessarily um, understand exactly what open active is or open data was and a bit of misunderstanding around that. 
Um, so I think there might also be a, a piece around um, of learning around education um, for people in the sector. And I think this particularly emphasised with um, turnover of staff, which the National Active Partnership Network have raised as something that has been quite high over the last year or two so that there might be quite a lot of new staff that aren't that familiar with open active and some people who have been in, engaged with the initiative in in the past have moved on or, or changed role um, and that some of that learning and knowledge might have might have been lost or or um or been re redeployed somewhere else um so yeah a bit of bit of learning around that um so that was this sort of first bullet point on the slide. And, and the second one, on the back of the activity finder session, which the National Active Partnerships Network organised, um, Activity Alliance got in touch with the AP network and um, it led to a follow up uh, conversation with them around inclusion in activity finders. And I think that might be a really um, important topic for a future adoption engagement forum. Um, in terms of inclusion and disability sport, but they raised um, some points both about the amount of disability sport activities and the types of activities which are available on Finders, um, and also some points around user experience of um, Finders and things to do with online payment and um, and uh, consistency and and things like that. So. Um, yeah, some some really interesting points, and I think I think I'll try to invite um, the Activity Alliance to come along to to a meeting in in the future to talk through in a bit more detail because I think um, you know it, it's a topic that worth worth a bit more a bit more focus and a bit more attention, a bit more time time on it than than just in a, in a few trying to rush through it in a few minutes now. Um, but yeah, I don't know if anyone has any quick thoughts or, or comments on anything I said I, I don't know if G Geraldine I don't want to put you on the spot on your on your first meeting but I don't know if you attended that meeting if you had any uh, other thoughts no I didn't it sounded like it would have been a great one for me to attend I was actually going to ask is it recorded and can I still access it um I'm not sure I think it was Nikki Cousins at the Active Partnerships Network who ran it so it might be worth just double checking with her um but yeah I'm not I'm not sure if she recorded it or not but she she will might have some notes and things she can share with you yeah, no, that'd have been a good one because obviously we're looking at um, launching a new activity finder for South and West Yorkshire and we're at a process where we'll start trying to engage with the relevant audiences. So if there's anything in, in there around the messaging and how to do the engagement, then that'd be really helpful for us. OK, yeah, great. No, well, yeah, I'd, I'd say um, to, to follow up with Nikki and, and yeah, I'm sure she can sh share some of the learnings and, and some of the information about follow up meetings and things like that as well. Thank you. Um, Tim, if it's um, helpful, sorry, Charlie speaking, I've realised I've got my camera as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm obviously a little bit long in the tooth of provision in activity finders from a playways perspective. Um, one thing I would suggest that is considered as part of that exercise, and, and if, there's, if it's a kind of positioning thing of lead with the concept of activity finders and the value they provide, I would just ask that somebody consider the growth loop uh, impact that has. Um, and, and what I mean by that is what evidence do we have that um, active partnerships individually as groups or on scale um, putting product in place in an activity finder has an impact on growth <laughs> um, because an exercise was done 12 18 months ago to aggregate all the activity finder um, performance data um, traffic of, of users mostly um, and the volume of users on, on them was quite small as, as a individually and collectively and that will um, have an impact on the attractiveness to um, data providers to to um, uh, publish their data and so it's just a risk that you know they're they're not, not not it's not about their locality but they're just their influence as a consumer product is not high enough to cause the growth loop to work and so I don't want wouldn't want a huge amount of work and focus to go into something that hasn't been sort of tested and proven um, where there could potentially be really good use cases with investment and funding coming into the market. Let's take holiday activity and food, OSSF, where active partnerships are involved. And it could be just a, a slightly different positioning where value could be added, um, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, definitely that, that makes sense. Thanks, Charlie. Um, do, you, do you remember um, when you say the piece of work was done around 18 months or so ago, was, was that done by 
this group by uh, it was done by Jason. The ADI, by Jason at the when he was at the yeah. ODI. When he was at the ODI, yeah, before he before he moved. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, great. I uh, think if uh, sorry, Tim, I was just, yep. just going to jump in. That's again. Um, uh, a couple of things. I, I think it's actually um, it's a, it's a really positive sign that so many active partnerships are are trying to uh, explore this a bit more. I think I think um, I think there's a better awareness of what it means to to deliver good products, whether or not certain organisations are best placed to deliver those products or not. We can debate, but. Uh, what what I think isn't um, sort of uh, questionable is is how well active partnerships link in to the local community, uh, leisure local authority, community providers, and how having a thing locally is one of the best ways to engage the long tail as well as the leisure operators. So I think I, my personal view, if there's a willingness, we should support it because you know open active needs to grow. We need to go where there's where there's momentum, where there's enthusiasm. So let's do that. Um, Secondly, there's a lot of uh, different shapes and sizes of active partnership projects going on that we're directly involved in. I'm sure there's others where there's slightly more investment, maybe coming out of the Commonwealth um, opportunities in the summer um, and others, other funds sort of coming available where they're doing different things focused on different audiences, but they're doing it not just let's put something live and leave it and see what happens. There's actually quite meaningful work going on. Um, so if if this does become a not to use the, the the slightly undefined phrase use case, but if this does become a use case, then um, there is there is sort of a wealth of what's been done in the last nine months that would be worth sort of looking at. Um, and I guess lastly, uh, a general a general request. Um, I, I'm in, and I think at, at Tom at Played side, we got a few sort of emails after that session, sort of saying, oh, what, what um, basically a few confused people that may have heard some things and didn't understand other things and then we had to have a few calls and sort of not set the record straight but almost sort of put everything in context again um and this isn't to say that uh anything on that call that said was was incorrect but i think if we as a group are talking to the same organizations we should try and be consistent in what it is we're saying um and so maybe where the i don't know how much um how much notice we, there was for this this meeting um, but it might be that if we'd known the meeting was happening, we could have shared shared ahead of time a bit more context and said, "Oh, you know, these organisations we're speaking to, and this is what we've heard, and this is what we could raise, and these are the these are the myths that definitely need busting or whatever." Um, just a bit of a, an opportunity for us as a community to input prior to the meeting rather than rather than afterwards. Thanks, Nish. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair point. Um... As I say, it was organised by the Active Partnerships Network, so so we didn't influence influence that. But um, yeah, no, I think that's that's certainly a fair comment, and it, yeah, would be good in um, in future possibly to try and bear that in mind. Um, just conscious of time, so I think if everyone's happy, we'll just move on quickly to any other business, just in case has anyone has anything they'd like to raise in the last couple of minutes. I think that this is positive steps forward towards creating focus around what this group's trying to achieve. And um, yeah, I think if we can just be clear on on what, what that is and how we can support, um, I think we'll, we'll make some good progress. But yeah, there's moment, a lot of momentum going on more than I've seen before on the ground. And I think there's a good opportunity to get behind the things that are working and to, yeah, just keep without trying to people please and trying to do everything we can do. I think that use cases conversation is interesting when they come to, to fruition as to like, what is the mo meaningful things that we can get behind. And that will then just give a lot more clarity on, on how this group can be effective. Yeah, I, I, I just say on, on top of that point, uh, to, I, think, <coughs> to, I think there's so much happening right now uh, this group will be successful if it can really be useful to people that are doing the work. Um, and so uh, I think, um, I guess this is just a, when those terms of reference get shared, whatever they look like right now, I expect they might get quite a lot of feedback on if we do it well, right? Um, from people like Nish, like Tom, who are busily engaging people doing the work on the ground. 
And if we get if we get this right, this group should be useful for everyone. There should be a reason that Nish wants to turn up every week, and even the team of people that you know that are engaging within within um, within IMIN uh, or or other organisations. You know, harsh on the call should want to turn up um, and not think, oh, this is just another hour of you know. Um, so if we if we get this right, it should support what's happening, and I think that will require people to be inputting on those terms and really shaping them. So that's just me kind of saying, hopefully whatever gets shared of the terms gets, you know, totally written all over and scribbled on because people care and, and want to want to make this work. So fingers crossed, it's not just kind of a document that gets shared. Everyone goes, yeah, great, crack up, you know, <laughs> waves it through. Uh, I think if that's what's happening, we should cancel, you know, just sack it off and do it in, and ask for more comments because if we just got a document that gets shared and everyone waves it through and we, I think we're doing it wrong. Either don't use a document, pick a different type of interaction. Do you know what I mean? Um, but if, if, if there's no engagement with the document, that doesn't mean we've got success. That means we need to engage differently until we get engagement and then we'll have done it right. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a fair point, Nick. And I think that's um, that's a nice, nice point to end on. I think that, um, yeah, we're, we're making positive steps and, and that's positive for the future. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for your, for your time. It's great, great to see some new faces as well. And um, so, thank you for your time and for joining us. And uh, hopefully, see you again in a couple of weeks' time.